Okay. Good afternoon, everyone who's already here with us. So it's still a little early. We still couple still see a couple of people streaming in. So what we're gonna do we're just gonna wait for a couple more minutes, probably one or two more minutes for everyone else to stream in before we start on today's session. So yep, just give us probably one or two minutes and we'll begin really shortly. <clears throat> okay, I think pretty much everyone here has joined for today. So, yep, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Don, and on today's session, uh, we'll be going through all of market outlook. Um, just before we start, we have a um, reminder from the Vantage team. Um, they do, they do have a, a promotion going on right now on 50 plus 10 percent deposit bonus. So, just something for you guys to consider if you are um, already active in trading live. Um, this could be something that could be interesting to you. So this is a quick idea of how the promotion works for you to kickstart your trading journey. And uh, and some steps for you to claim your deposit bonus. Just three simple steps. Um, and you do need to open a live account, opt in to the promotion, um, make a deposit and claim. And um, this is a quick QR code here for you to scan so you can get your bonus as well. Um, you can also visit the bonus the the page on vantagemarkets.com um, to do that as well. So I'll just leave the QR code on the screen for a little bit while you guys um um while you guys uh have some chance to scan the QR code on your screens. Um but yes do take note that um you need to open a live account and that's something you should only do um when you feel ready and when you feel like you have enough experience to trade um, live capital. Otherwise there's always options to um opt for a paper trading account until you feel ready but of course if you are a seasoned trader um, or a seasoned retail investor and you are comfortable trading your own capital then this could be something that's interesting to you so yep i'm just going to leave that on the screen for about a minute before we start on today's session Oops, sorry about that OK, 
Okay. Um, yeah, without further ado, I think we can start on today's session. Let me just bring up my other set of slides right now. And we can start for today. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Welcome to today's session. So, on today's session, um, we'll be covering oil's market outlook. And as always, at the end of the slides, there will be another QR code for you to, to scan for feedback form. So if you have any questions for me, or if you have any um, feedback for today's session, things that you would like us to cover in future sessions, um, you can leave it there um, so that I can, I'll be able to see it. Um, if you have any other questions that I didn't manage to answer in this session as well, you can also leave it there. Um, but yeah, we can start today's session on our market outlook. Um, just a quick disclaimer and um, quick risk warning. Do understand that you're trading derivatives. Um, this includes CFDs, which I guess some of you probably will be familiar with already, and that does carry significant risk. It's not suitable for all investors, and you need to do and understand the risk that you're taking on when you're um, trading these products or participating in these markets. So I'm just going to leave this um, for a few seconds on the screen for you guys to read. Um, if you're regular um, attendees of the webinars, you, should, you would have seen this already. Um, just going to leave it there for a few seconds so you guys um, can read that. And, uh, understand that. Okay, I think with that, we can start on today's session. So again, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be talking about um, oil, specifically crude oil, Brent, WTI, which are the benchmarks for crude oil in the world. Um, we'll talk a little bit about price action, which is pretty universal across different assets when you're looking at uh, price action, price action strategies. And we'll finally end off with a quick live analysis session. I'll show you how um, Brent and WTI is performing currently in the markets and uh, some things you guys need to take note um, in conjunction with the fundamentals um, that are playing out in, in the current oil markets. So we'll start off pretty basic, pretty fundamental. What is oil and why do people trade oil? So in our case, crude oil is basically unrefined petroleum that is extracted from the earth when it's a key product of um, the global commodity markets. So whenever we talk about commodities, um, crude oil benchmarks like Brent and WTI tend to come up in the conversation quite um, regularly and uh, it's quite common to see them in, in like uh, market updates just so you know roughly how the commodity markets are performing you tend to look at um, a few commodity markers like crude oil and Brent and WTI you also look a little bit at gold uh, as, a, as a market for precious metals and um, why crude oil is typically looked at is basically it's seen as the primary source to make um, very very much almost all different other oil derivatives. So we're talking about um, commonly used products like gasoline, diesel, etc. So are derived from a refining process um, through crude oil. And you, you would also look at benchmarks that are a little bit tied more closely to the different products if you're interested in the area. So if you're an oil trader or your company that um, actively uses oil, um, oil derivatives like gasoline or diesel, you look at that. But uh, as a general, um, as a general sort of benchmark, a lot of people tend to look at the crude oil benchmarks because all the derivatives tend to follow um, quite closely and track quite closely to the major benchmarks. So oil trading, um, what oil trading involves typically, um, first of all, high volatility. And why that is because it's because oil and crude oil is typically seen as a risk on asset. So if you think about the demand and supply dynamics mm -hmm. of crude oil, um, the demand for crude oil tends to go up when the economy is doing well. You know, manufacturing is doing, um, manufacturing activity is up. There's a lot of need for crude oil to power manufacturing activities and other economic activities as well. That's why in more risk on environments, um, people want to put um, cash to work, put money to work, um, investing um, for the future, um, oil tends to 
oil tends to do much better. And that also means that uh, oil is very receptive to um, market movers um, and uh, receptive to geopolitical events. And that's why typically there might be a lot of volatility when you look at oil. Um, secondly, market liquidity. You mentioned earlier, um, crude oil, especially the benchmarks like WTI and Brent, um, are looked at very closely by a lot of market participants as benchmarks. And that also means there are a lot of people that trade in these markets, which offers very deep market with high liquidity. And so it's easy to participate in the market as well. And that's also helped by the versatility in trading equipment. So if you're looking at spot crude oil, or you're looking at um, crude oil futures, can take part in the market for that and express your opinion on the oil markets through many different trading instruments like futures, options, CFDs, uh, other derivatives and what have you. These are all trading instruments that allow you, um, a market participant to express their um, opinion on where they believe crude oil will be, what's the value of crude oil prices right now and where they see it going in the future. And finally, um, crude oil definitely has very strong global demand like what I mentioned um, on how it's very tied to the risk on risk off attitude of general global markets and also its strategic importance in many different industries and why it's tied so closely to economic performance. So that um, in a very quick nutshell is what oil crude oil is and why um, there's so much trading activity that goes on in that market. So when you look at oil fundamentals, a couple of things to take note of both from the demand and supply side, on the supply side, I think um, what's important is, of course, firstly, the influence of OPEC, OPEC Plus. Um, it's, uh, it's important to see what their position is on managing the supply of oil around the world. And um, that gives us an indication for the, the general supply of crude oil. Um, secondly, also we look at inventories, for example, the EIA US, which typically affects the WTI um, benchmark, which is the US benchmark. Um, these inventories also tell us um, how much oil is left in supplies, how much is available, and quite simply, um, that gives us an idea of one side of the coin of demand supply dynamics. And then on demand side, on the demand side, um, definitely points three and four are quite interlinked, global economic conditions and geopolitical events. So like I mentioned, um, the risk on risk of attitude and how demand for oil tends to pick up more risk on uh, environments that definitely affects um, how demand for oil would look like and also geopolitical events. So events that could shape um, how the economy could be run. So things like, for example, the US presidential race, um, these are events that are important. Things like COVID-19 pandemic, which is important, um, which sort of um, remove, diminish the demand for crude oil a little bit, given that um, a lot of people were, were scared how the COVID-19 pandemic is going to impact the economy in a negative way. So these are big um, geopolitical events, like what we would, might consider also black swan events in the, in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic that does have an impact quite significantly on the crude oil markets. Um, but also something to take note um, are also regular um, economic events and economic data releases. So it's things like um, Fed speeches, Fed decisions on rate cuts, rate hikes, um, data releases that are um, tied to OPEC plus decisions or EIA inventory um, data releases, for example. These also affect oil um, quite a bit, and especially when um, the crude oil market and the crude oil, um, uh, the projections for where these data releases releases would be versus what actually is released. And they differ a lot. That's when the market tends to move a little bit more and you see a little bit more volatility in crude oil markets. So that's something that you should take note for fundamentals. And finally, I think technological advancements, ESG concerns definitely play a little bit into the um, crude oil markets. Um, there's a lot of ESG concerns regarding the use of crude oil, or perhaps well, many might argue excessive use of crude oil. Um, so that definitely does play into um, crude oil markets and also the development of the market going into the future um, as we move a little bit more towards um, an ESG focused uh, an ESG focused world it's a little bit more um, concerned of the effects of using so much of raw materials like crude oil from the planet.
So, so yeah, some things on fundamentals to take note of. But all in all, I think, like a lot of commodity products, um, demand and supply dynamics are extremely important. Um, when you think about um, commodity markets, whether it be crude oil, it might be precious metal like gold, pretty important there. Um, but also for oil, um, things like data releases that give you an idea of economic sentiment and the risk-on, risk-off attitude of the economy also plays into the part um, about it as well. So when you when you think about it, you, should, you do need to think of uh, sentiment on one hand as well as the demand supply dynamics on the other. So yeah, that's on oil fundamentals. And I'll go through a little bit on price action, which I think is pretty universal throughout all different um, asset classes. You, you could be looking at effects, equities, what have you, commodities. Um, they are all, as long as there is a price chart, you can use very similar, um, you can use very similar techniques to take a look at charts. So for example, your bullish uptrend doesn't change, right? You have your highs, lows, and higher highs and higher lows. And critically, that big of structure towards the high, your bearish downtrend as well, your lower highs and lower lows, your break of structure towards the lows, and your ranging markets will also be there. You're trying to find a very strong support and resistance. And then you see that um, price manages to respect those levels very well. That's when you, you, you would expect um, so long as these levels hold and the market will continue to move sideways. So yep, that's that critical idea of a break of structure is still important there, right? It still plays a pivotal role in recognizing the market structure. So whether it's bullish or bearish, um, you can use break of structures to help you identify um, whether the price action is continue, it's going to continue evolving in one way or it's going to shift towards another. So that helps you to, first of all, um, have the habit to to identify the significant highs or lows that have been established in price movement. And once they are broken, of course, they, they don't, they're not no longer valid as like support and resistances. And once this break of structure has happened, they could either indicate for, for one, that the, the trend is continuing in the direction in the same way, or potentially it could be a signal of a shift in the market structure away from what you're looking at. So for example, from a downtrend to an uptrend, you would typically see a break of structure towards the high after consistent um, break structures to the low. And then the converse is true um, for, for the other way, the other the other way of change in market structure. So yeah, that is the concept of break structure. It's very, very similar. Um, if you've been to our webinar series to, to see um, these sort of price action strategies um, being played out, but I would say in the event of um, gold, it, uh, sorry, not gold. Um, in the event of oil, um, given that there is much higher volatility, you tend to see um a lot of bigger movements. Um, especially you tend to see a lot of bigger movement, and there are, for example, data releases. Um, or for example, when markets feeling more choppy, um, you tend to see bigger movements, and that's why. Um, that those are things that you need, do need to take care of and you need to be careful of. So even if you're on a lower time frame, or even if you're on a higher time frame, sorry, you might still see. Um, big movements that's influenced by demand and supply dynamics. And um, that's something if you're a retail investor um, to need to be mindful of, size your positions in the right way and, and size your stop loss and take profits in the right way to avoid um, being prematurely stopped up, for example. So that is on break of structure. And with that, I think we can move on to the live charts. I'll pause a little bit before I move on for any questions that you guys might have. Okay, don't see any questions. We do have some time, so I will just go through what we're seeing on brand and WTI charts. So um, you might you guys might be thinking, um, what's the difference right between these two benchmarks, brand, WTI, what's the difference? So generally brand is seen as more of a global benchmark, and uh WTI is seen as more of a US benchmark. That's um because brand is um Brent is a benchmark for oil that's extracted from the North Sea. Um, and then WTI, West Texas Intermediate, definitely it's, of course, um, oil that's extracted from the US. So um, there are some differences between Brent and WTI. For example, the quality of the crude oil that's um, been extracted from, um, that is extracted and, and found in Brent crude oil and WTI crude oil. 
um, WT Acura is generally thought to be a little bit light, sweeter, for example. And um, you will also see here in the live charts that there is a spread between these two benchmarks. So you can see there is a premium in um, the Brent prices as compared to WTI. Um, generally, what is thought of is because of the extraction, the ease of extraction of this crude oil from where they have been um, harvested. So for example, um, Brent crude oil is extracted from the North Sea um, the, and the oil fields there. Um, it's, it's generally much easier to extract and transport these oil out from where they are from where they were from as compared to WTI where it's extracted from more landlocked locations so that it costs a little bit more to um, be able to extract oils from those oil fields um, in the US like in places like Texas, North Dakota and Louisiana. So because of that um, because of the ease of transport for brand crude um, there is a premium the price for brand crude oil and it has sort of stayed in that place um, from the early 2000s. So, yeah, um, that is the reason why their Brent and WTI um, does differ a little bit. And um, with that, you can also imagine that things like US inventories probably would affect WTI um, crude oil much more, for example. Or, um, but of course, things like OPEC Plus might affect um, general oil benchmarks um, universally. Um, but yes, there's some things to take note, and that's also the reason why there is a spread between these two prices, but they're both thought of, thought of as more global benchmarks, just where they are more generally used. So Brent um, generally uses, is generally used as the benchmark for about two-thirds of um, oil products in the world, and then WTI for the remainder. Um, so yeah, with that, I think we can take a look at Brent, um, the Brent charts, and just an idea of the fundamentals. So right now, um, you can see that there is... Um, on a weekly, for example, you can see that there is a very strong downtrend in brand, uh, brand oil prices, and um, that's sort of powered by demand dynamics, um, given that there's a lot of concerns around the demand from, for example, China, which is a big importer of oil, and the US, for example, in the economies, there is some uncertainty around whether their economies could recover at a pace that um, what was initially expected which is why um, that demand dynamic has been pushing um, crude oil prices down, even with um, recent um, support from the OPEC, from OPEC Plus that when they said that um, you know, they're going to pause their planned crude production increase. They're, from EIA data, we also saw that there was a fall in supply, which should have provided a little bit of support to prices. But I think that that general um, fear of slowing demand has been um, the prevailing market sentiment that has been pushing oil prices in one direction downwards. So that is, um, I guess, just the current market environment of where crude oil is at. But uh, of course, it could develop in other ways for us to see. But generally, as we are seeing more slowing demand, that is sort of the idea behind why crude oil has been falling. And as you can see here, it's actually pretty close to the weekly support actually near that level now at the 72.7 level around the 72.3 level that is a weekly support that i think probably be interesting you can see that price reacted once twice three times and it's coming very close to this area now on brand crude on the daily you see it's around that level it looks like it's reacting off of it a little bit so as you see it's a very bearish uh, market structure where you can see your low high and lower high and lower low slightly lower low here and lower high here and then making a next lower low so i think if um, price were to very clearly break below that 72.3 um uh, 72.3 level um, it's a very clear sign of a bearish structure that's going to continue um, you can also see a very it's very uh, okay that's not the best trend line but you get the idea that Generally, the price structure looks very, very bearish right now. Even on the four hour, it's a very similar story that's being told. Um, so yeah, that's why that's what I would expect from crude prices. You can see that it's holding below this trend line over here. The best trend line, given that there's not much reaction of that trend line yet. You can see the price came close here, but didn't really touch the trend line, came really close here, and then didn't really touch as well. So probably, um, what I could see that 72.3 level could provide that last support and a pull back towards this um, support level over here on a four hour, uh, sorry, the resistance level over here previously acted as a support at the 75 level. 
So this could be one area to take a look at. We saw there was support here, cross came close here, and then finally broke below here. So this pullback um, resistance could be something that's interesting. If you take a Fibonacci from this top to this bottom, probably 38 is quite close here. You can see that, le that level there and an extension also probably could be possible. Yeah, you can see the 61.8% extension is quite close by. So it is still pretty far away from that. Um, it is still pretty far away from the, the descending trend line, um, but price could hover around these two levels um, before it pulls back a little bit to retest that trend line. So I think it's, it is still possible. Um, but this, uh, this is a level that I think it will be interesting given it's on a weekly, it's a very, um, a very obvious support. Um, that price could hesitate around that level before pulling back a little bit. And then we can continue to see, you know, how prices will evolve from there, whether um, there could be a pullback that's stronger than expected and can reignite a little bit more of a bullish sentiment in the crude oil markets, or whether, you know, it could break below that, that low of 72.3, that key low, and then start pushing towards the downside. And I think with that, probably a more bearish market sentiment would take over in the markets and would... Um, which crude oil prices a little lower. Given, you know, recent fundamentals, I think that the second, the latter is probably more, um, is probably a little bit more, a little bit more likely, I would say. Um, but yeah, definitely still um, just continue to take a look at where price is at, where it's near the key um, support resistance levels where we expect more reaction coming out, especially um, with London hours coming in and US hours coming in. And also with today's um, US payroll, um, reports coming out give us an idea of um how big the Fed rate, the Fed rate cuts could be. Um, that's one thing to take note of, and that's probably why there's still a little bit of hesitation here, even though London hours have started. Um, perhaps you might not want to get into a position in um a volatile instrument like crude oil yet, until things are much clearer. Um, from the US point of view, on payrolls and, and jobs data and, and the labor market, how that would drive um the pace of rate cuts from here on out. So, yeah, that's that's what I would say. Right now, probably going to be a little bit more hesitation until tonight clears, and things are much clearer from the US labor market. Um, but those are levels I would take. Continue to look at seventy five and seventy two point three, and how um price reacts from there. If there is a clear break and close below the seventy two point three level, um, then I think bearish sentiment um is very clear, and you can start looking for more bearish setups. Um, if there is um a stronger pullback, then I'll probably just wait and see and see where um price could evolve from there and um relook at the fundamentals for crude oil to see um if there is a revival in demand or or rather if there isn't and there is a change in supply dynamics that time that would over that would outweigh the, the demand dynamics there. So yeah, that's that that is generally what I see in crude oil markets. Um we do have a little bit of time left. So I'm just going to pause here and switch over to my slides. And let's see if we have any questions before we end today's session. Okay, I don't see any questions. Um, yeah, that's fine. You, if you have any questions um, that you might think of after today's session, um, you can see a QR code on the screen right now. Um, you can that leads you to our feedback form, and that um, is where you can leave any questions that you might have on today's session that you did manage to ask. Um, if you want them answered, um, you can leave it there, and I can see them, and can probably address them in the next session if they if those come up or if you have any feedback on today's session or things that you want us to cover, um, you can also scan this feedback form um, so that you can leave your feedback there. I'll be able to see it and perhaps you can cover those topics in future sessions. Um, again, um, just a reminder from Advantage team that they do have that um, deposit bonus promotion going on. So if you are live seasoned trader, that is something that you could consider if you're comfortable trading the markets already. Um, yeah, if not, I think that brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon and I'll see you in the next session.